Diarrheal Diseases Diarrhea can be caused by many types of human pathogens, including those that were covered in prior presentations. Pathogenic viruses, bacteria, protists, and worms may all cause diarrhea. MRSA, methicillin-resistant S. aureus, infection of the colon, can cause diarrhea. Water balance is controlled by both intake and then excretion. The body is about 60% water found both inside and outside our cells. Our bodies take in water via the digestive tract. So it comes through the mouth, down through the esophagus, and then into the stomach, then small intestine, large intestine, the colon, and finally leaves via the anus. The kidneys and the hypothalamus gland communicate and they use hormones to regulate the amount of water that stays in the body and the amount of water excreted in urine. And this, of course, is the excretory system, which is not shown over here to the right. Most of the water taken in is absorbed in the beginning of the small intestine. Additional water is absorbed by the stomach and colon. Water travels across membranes according to the principles of osmosis. It moves passively from areas with high water concentration to areas with low water concentration. And that's the same as saying from areas with a lower solute concentration to areas with a higher solute concentration. In healthy adults, very little water is lost in feces. On average, an adult takes in two liters of water per day. Only 10% of that is lost in feces, about 200 milliliters. Most water is normally lost in urine, sweat, and exhalation. Diarrhea is the loss of too much water in feces. It can be a symptom of gastroenteritis or irritation and inflammation of the stomach and intestines, and may be accompanied by abdominal cramps, bloating, and vomiting. Diarrhea results when the osmotic balance in the intestines is disturbed, and water is not absorbed normally in the stomach, small intestine, and colon. When osmosis is disturbed, excess water may flow out of the body with feces. Dehydration can result from poor water absorption by the intestines. The symbols of dehydration are dark urine, fatigue, dizziness, and thirst. Extended periods of dehydration can take a large toll on a person's health. Most diarrheal diseases are caused by viruses, parasitic bacteria, protozoa, or worms moving through a community. It is estimated that diarrheal illnesses are responsible for approximately 13.2% of all childhood deaths worldwide. Approximately 2 million children under the age of 5 die from gastroenteritis each year. Some more information on this topic can be found here. Most of the time, the immune system is able to take care of infections that causes diarrhea, and it does not last a long time. Humans can acquire immunity to many of the common causes, so adults tend to have diarrhea less frequently than children. Some infections, however, are chronic. They are not quickly removed by the immune system. Some pathogens can evade the immune system. Chronic infections of the intestines can damage them, leading to chronic diarrhea, dehydration, undernourishment, and malnutrition. There are many pathways for diarrheal infection. First of all, you can have contaminated drinking water from feces. Irrigation from the contaminated drinking water, which can lead to contaminated produce. Preparation of food with contaminated water. Contaminated hands from contact with feces. And finally, they all lead to contaminated food or beverages. Causes of diarrhea. Let's start with the viruses. The viruses that cause diarrhea are rotavirus, norovirus, and adenorovirus, and others. Rotavirus has been the most common cause of diarrhea, but now infection can be prevented by vaccination. Norovirus is a common cause of gastroenteritis and is highly infectious. Unlike HIV and many other viruses, norovirus remains infectious on surfaces and foods, so frequent hand washing, cleaning surfaces, and avoiding the things that infected people have touched are keys to prevention. Here's an electron micrograph of the norovirus particles. The most common bacterial causes of diarrhea are Escherichia coli and Shigella. 
A less common cause is Vibrio cholera, the bacteria that causes cholera. E. coli transmission occurs via the fecal-oral route. Feces of humans or animals can carry E. coli. Therefore, cattle grazing near sources of water, contamination of groundwater, and eating undercooked meat are risk factors for E. coli infection. In 1992, cattle grazing near the stream in Swaziland caused an outbreak of severe diarrheal disease. Eating undercooked beef and leakage of the stream water into wells were thought to cause the outbreak. And here's more information on that outbreak. Shigella is a genus of bacteria that has four species and many strains. It is spread by consuming contaminated food or water or by hand-to-mouth transmission. If the immune system does not review, remove Shigella bacteria from a person's body, it can be treated with an antibiotic. It is important to take antibiotics exactly as prescribed by a doctor so that antibiotic resistant strains do not evolve. That means even if you're feeling better after taking it for two days, if the doctor said to take it for 10, you have to do that to make sure you're protected. Antibiotic resistance to Shigella is a health problem of increasing concern in many countries. Vibrio cholera is the type of bacteria that causes cholera. While it causes illness less frequently than E. coli or Shigella, the World Health Organization estimates that 100,000 to 200,000 deaths due to cholera occur annually. As an example, in Malawi, cholera outbreaks have occurred every two to seven years over the past 40 years. As with other bacterial causes of gastroenteritis, contamination of water with human waste, hand-to-mouth transmission, and unsanitary handling of food are the most common causes of cholera outbreaks. Communities that use untreated lake or river water for drinking are at the highest risk of cholera outbreak. Boiling water and proper hand washing can help prevent cholera infection. Giving antibiotics to symptomatic patients and the administration of the cholera vaccine will save lives. 10% of people infected with Vibrio cholera will develop severe symptoms. If treatment is given in a timely manner, fewer than 1% of the infected people will die. In countries with unequal access to health care, the fatality rate can exceed 5%. And this chart, here's the fatality rate. So when you have this lighter color, the fatality rate is less than 1%. The medium color, 1 to 4.99%. And this last color, greater than or equal to 5. The dots show where cholera cases came from another place and surfaced in that country. So wherever you see these colors here, that's where you have very, a very bad percentage for people dying. Diarrhea can also be caused by protist parasites. Protozoa is the informal name given to these animal-like protists. They are usually microscopic, unicellular, that means one cell, motile, able to move, and aquatic. Protozoan parasites can cause diarrhea. Entamoeba histolytica causes ambiasis, or more commonly known as amoebic dysentery. This parasite attaches to the colon and causes bloody diarrhea and tissue damage. Giardia lamblia causes traveler's diarrhea. It infects people who drink contaminated water and is also transmitted from person to person. Cryptosporidium parvum causes crypto cryptosporidius, also known as just crypto, a disease that causes damage to microvilli in the small intestine poor nutrient absorption, and watery diarrhea. Parasitic worms, which were discussed earlier, also cause diarrhea. There are three types of parasitic worms, commonly called flukes, segmented worms, and nematodes, and we covered those in a previous presentation. Healthy immune systems protect people from many protozoan parasite infections. For example, passive immunity from breastfeeding protects infants from a cryptosporidium infection. More than half of AIDS patients in Africa have cryptose, while it is rare in other populations, indicating that the lack of a healthy immune response allows this infection to take hold. The keys to prevention are using clean water sources, boiling water, filtering water, using sedimentation settling, or treating water with iodine or sodium hypochlorite. 
using sanitation facilities that prevent water contamination, breastfeeding, avoiding others with viral infections, maintaining a healthy immune system, washing hands frequently, washing fruits and vegetables before eating them, and keeping grazing cattle far from water that could contaminate the drinking water. These references provide detailed information about water sanitation. The right approach for any community will depend on many factors, including the pathogens present, technology and resources available, technical expertise, monitoring and maintenance, and the taste and appearance of the treated water. Seek medical help if the systems below persist. Identification of the cause of diarrhea will allow a medical professional to prescribe the right medication. So we have fatigue, nausea, bloating, stomach pain, weight loss, worms in the stool, and of course diarrhea. Home remedies to treat diarrhea symptoms help people recover from dehydration caused by the diarrhea. Drinking water is the first step. And here's one home remedy. Oral Rehydration Solution, ORS, ORS, is made by mixing a liter of water, half a teaspoon of salt, and six teaspoons, which is two tablespoons of sugar. Babies should drink about half a liter per day. Children should drink about 200 milliliters of solution after each bout of diarrhea or one liter per day. People over the age of 12 should drink 200 to 400 milliliters of solution after each bout of diarrhea or two to three liters per day. Before making oars, wash your hands, wash the water container, and boil the water if it might be contaminated. We have our salt up here, half a level teaspoon right over here, five grams, sugar, 20 grams of sugar, previously boiled potable water, fresh water, and that'll make a liter of this drink. There are medical treatments for diarrheal diseases. Drugs includes, including metrodinazole, quinacrine, tinidazole, furazolidone, or paramycin can be used to treat protozoan par parasites. Antibiotics may be used to treat bacterial infections, but should be used only when necessary and as prescribed to decrease the development of antibiotic resistance. 